Good day, spiritual artists. This is CJ Miller, your host, and we are listening to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Um, we are on to chapter 19 of the Doodle Book Club, reading the spiritual artist we are designed to create. So, quote, the best way to capture moments is to pay attention. This is how we cultivate mindfulness. Mindfulness means being awake. It means knowing what you are doing. John Kabat Zinn. Chapter 19, Intentional Attention. Intentional Attention. I returned to my easel yesterday and faced a quandary. As I stood back and examined my previous work, I was torn by indecision. My start was quite beautiful with rich hues of rust, teal, aqua, and olive green. The strokes were broad and bold, and after years of experience, I instinctively knew that this painting would probably find a buyer precisely as it was. But the work was missing something for me that lacked a specific energy and sense of aliveness. It didn't excite me and felt flat. Suddenly, I recognized what I didn't like about the work. I realized that when I had painted the day before, I was following the well-worn path of familiarity. This new painting looked very similar to something I'd painted before. I had fallen into a common trap, the safety of the familiar. Many artists get caught in the trap of past success. They discover a style of painting that receives good reviews and continue painting the same style repeatedly. I believe that a spiritual artist avoids this trap at all costs. A spiritual artist paints with presence in mind. A painting is a journal of your expression today, not yesterday. I had fallen into the trap of safety. With a sigh of recognition, I picked up my brush and began making large, dramatic changes to the canvas, slowly obliterating the work from the day before. Artistic director Anne Bogart in her book, And Then You Act, Making Art in an Unpredictable World, details this attentive middle state. Quote, if the work is too controlled, it will feel constricted and lifeless, Anne explains. If there is too little control, it will be chaotic and hard to see and hear. Agree to celebrate the paradox of firm, decisive action and letting go all at the same moment. You do not lead the work. The work leads you. You must be willing to discard vast amounts of material at any moment, end quote. Many artists fall into the trap of restricting their work by painting in the past. Recognizing the ego self and its crucial role in this habit is critical to a spiritual artist and requires exercising attention throughout the process. We must be willing to examine our efforts and recognize when we are not painting in our presence. Our goal is not to complete pro prolific work, but to complete conscious work. I'm going to repeat that. Our goal is not to complete prolific work, but to complete conscious work. I find this by rooting myself firmly in the present as I paint. Bogart clarifies this state by emphasizing the role of attention required by an artist. Quote, watching over demands passionate presence and availability and absolutely no desire for any one thing in particular to happen but plenty of will to stay present. Like a hunter in wait for the appearance of a wild animal, the waiting is dynamic, end quote. When we paint in the present moment, we are acting with creative intelligence in the most meaningful way. It's the keen edge of expression where our work is bold, dynamic, fresh, and new. According to inspirational speaker Esther Hicks, quote, we are on the leading edge of creation by the very fact of our aliveness and our condition of livingness. I believe that a spiritual artist relishes creating in this space called the leading edge by maintaining their attention in the now and avoiding thoughts of the past and future. After I consciously recognized what wasn't working in my painting, I carefully grounded myself once again in the now moment. I began the process of reworking my efforts from the previous day. 
I'm not saying that everything you do must be fresh and original. After all, that would put us in another limited condition as well. Spiritual artists practice attention while they work and continually look for new possibilities. And that doesn't mean that we can't rely on techniques and skills we've learned from the past. All artists should have a toolbox from which they can draw different styles and marks distinctive to themselves. However, when we create with creative intelligence, we will invariably be creating new creative combinations with our tools. We will be painting on the leading edge. Our work should always be moving us ahead in authenticity. Eckhart Tolle in The Power of Now cautions against this tendency and clarifies the point. Quote, so do not be concerned with the fruit of your action. Just give attention to the action itself. The fruit will come of its own accord. This is a powerful spiritual practice. In the Bhagavad Gita, one of the oldest and most beautiful spiritual teachings in existence, non-attachment to the fruit of your action is called karma yoga. It is described as the path of consecrated action. End quote. As spiritual artists, we should not create with negative thoughts of the past, nor fearful thoughts of the future, but only through our attention, our attention to the intrinsic possibilities of the moment. Learning to create with conscious presence is the practice that will continually develop with awareness. With continual practice, I've learned to access this state for more extended and more significant periods of time. But it's a skill that requires a soft attention. According to Bogart, attention keeps us centered. Quote, attention is about going beyond self-interest, but at the same time remaining intensely in tune and responsive from within. You do this by bringing your attention to the issue at hand with no memory and no desire. You watch over the proceedings with the highest level of discrimination and wakefulness that you can possibly manage. End quote. It doesn't matter how long I continue to paint or how often I approach the canvas. I have to remember to practice attention. It's only by exercising responsive attention during each session that I can notice when I fall into the trap of the past and future. I must be willing to realign myself with the moment and willingly relinquish parts of my work that don't resonate truth within. As a spiritual artist, learn to co-create most effectively with creative intelligence in the now by practicing intentional attention. Folks, I love this chapter, and it's very subtle what we're talking about here. But we really are talking about being present to your work. And when you get to the point where you're actually hitting the canvas with your brush and you're not even thinking, you're not even in the moment, then you have to slow down. You have to get back into attention. Every stroke needs to be thoughtfully placed. So I'm working on a painting this morning and I actually painted a little bit before I did this reading. And I'm really enjoying it because it's a combination of a couple techniques that I've built and developed in previous paintings. So it has this wonderful layering technique, but it also has some straight edges. And my goal has always been to combine very hard edges with very soft blends. It's a challenge, it's a big challenge. And I think this painting is doing real good and it's gonna be in my show this fall, so maybe you'll come by and see it. But I notice that I can rush. And when I rush, the strokes get sloppy. And I have to go back to being, to looking at that brush as it touches the edge of that canvas on that edge of color. And wherever I'm trying to strengthen a line or erase a line, I have to be very present to exactly what I'm doing. When I get sloppy, you can see it. So every stroke has this precision to it. And I learned to leave a little bit, of, a little area of the painting, if it's a good area, while covering something that is distracting or throws off the composition. It's very, very attentional. It's very thoughtful. It's very intentional. Intentional attention. I have the intent. I always have the intent to pay the utmost attention to what I'm doing. Does that make sense? It's not just attention. It's this 
holding the intent that you know I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. So today, as you go out into the world, be intentional and pay attention to everything that's going on around you. Be very aware of what's going around on around you, not just being present in the moment, but notice the subtleties of everything around you. When you're interacting with a friend, listen to their word choice. Learn to notice what they're really saying as opposed to what you think they're saying, because you have to listen to the subtlety of their word choice. Same thing when you look at the sky or you're driving down the road, pay, pay attention to the details. It's a wonderful chapter. I'm so excited to be on this journey with you. Um, we are getting there. We are really getting there. Tomorrow is chapter 20. So we are moving ahead and I will talk to you tomorrow on the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Now, remember, you can, you can recommend this process, this reading doodle challenge to a friend. They can start on the first of any month and continue doing the challenge day by day. I appreciate your recommendations and sharing the word of the Spiritual Artist. Talk to you soon. Thanks again for listening to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Whether you're watching this show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or iHeartRadio, make sure you choose the subscribe button so that you will receive updates when new segments are released. Most importantly, be still, listen, and know that you are a spiritual artist.